I'm Sally Rees and I am largely a media artist. I'm working in electronic media but I work across a whole lot of forms. I'm still creating my own definition for how I want to exist as an artist. I think there are more ways than you can think of to be an artist and to practice. My name is Selena De Carvalho and I'm a visual cross-disciplinary artist and I work across a whole range of mediums. Currently I'm the artist in residence at Hutchins where I'm working on an electronic system that will allow me to listen to and sonify the electronic pulses of plants. Having a creative engagement with life is my definition of my practice. My name is Matt Warren. I work in electronic media, making installation using sound and video primarily. I'm also a practicing musician and a curator. Living in Tasmania continues to inspire my work because of that idea of hauntology and wanting to explore elements of memory. You can kind of see the world from a distance, I think, which is actually a really interesting take on image making. I'm Dean Stevenson. I'm a musician through performance and composition. Art is so fundamentally important right at the ground level to creating the spirit of a place. And Tasmania is no exception. That spirit creates an amazing art, which is then reflected in why so many people are coming here now. My name's Heath Brown. I'm a composer and sound designer. I've only applied for funding directly once, which was last year for a collaboration with Patricia Piccinini and Peter Hennessy, which was called The Shadows Calling, was programmed as part of Dark Mofo and presented by Detached. Artists who have got a degree of integrity and drive, I guess, with their own practice, they will make work anyway. But at some point, they need to show their work. Otherwise, they're just making work for themselves. And I think the funding bodies give that opportunity to the artists to show their work to other people rather than just make it for themselves. And that's a really important thing for culture to expand and, and evolve. Living as an artist is largely a fairly low rent affair. Maybe not quite the starving in garrets that is the cliche, but people are trying very, very hard to make a living like anyone else. And it's really helpful to sometimes get some assistance to invest in that work. For me, the times that I have applied for funding have almost been at, at sort of career crossroads and the impact has been support and confidence to keep moving. No great feat of engineering or great business comes because you created it in a second. They all come from time. Having time, which is this kind of strange elastic medium that is tied up with economy, so having funding gives me time to dream. I do a lot of ambitious work that's completely beyond the scope of what I'm able to realise on my own. You need time to, to ruminate, to go through the barriers of distraction and push through into that next state where you can then create the idea and invest your time into making something really special. It's easy to operate in something of a vacuum and there's a validation in receiving funding in support of what you do, uh, a validation that the work you are doing has value. So the process of writing the application forces you to think long term. The act of writing that makes you do that, which you probably wouldn't necessarily do unless you are particularly business focused, which a lot of artists tend not to be. So the grant process forces you to think long game, which is much better for you as a career artist. Because the core of my practice is collaborative, I'm often working on other people's projects, so while my name might not be on the grant applications that result in the funding for those projects, I'm regularly employed as a result of Arts Tasmania funding and my career has been able to develop the way that it has because of that funding. <laughs>